Now, we've touched grass, we've touched water, we've even touched Eggman. And following that pattern, today we are going to be continuing on with how fast can we touch ice in every Sonic game. Starting off, we're in Sonic 3. So we actually start in Sonic 3 because, well, there's no ice in Sonic 1 or 2. So naturally, we have to go to Sonic 3. So what this also means is that any game that does not have ice will not be included in this video. And also, I'll be counting snow as well because ice and snow kind of go together, so j just keep that in mind. So as you guys know, ice and snow are not as abundant as water and grass. So this is going to take a while, as you guys can see, it's already been 40 minutes and I have not had any luck touching ice or snow. But finally, we get to Ice Cap Zone, which means we have touched ice. Next is Sonic CD. Now, similar to Sonic 3, this one is going to take a while. And unfortunately for us, um, I forgot to set my hertz to 60. That is why the gameplay you see in the background is actually very fast. So, <laughs> ignore that. If you're familiar with Sonic CD, you know that there's no actual ice or snow level. But in Sonic CD, there's actually a stage that has ice in it which can actually freeze you so i'm gonna count that as freeze or ice what <clears throat> anyway oh. <laughs> so since i'm actually running at basically two times speed this makes it harder for me to actually tell what the ice is but i know what it looks like it's just harder to get from see this is the ice right here and there we go <laughs> and now we move on to sonic adventure now we all know Sonic Adventure is a game of water, so it would only make sense if its solid counterpart was also in this game. So we start out at Emerald Coast, which doesn't have ice because, well, I, I don't really think ice would spawn in a beach unless they're in a cup of water or something, I, I don't know. So about half of our playthrough has just been me and this pinball machine, and um, I just want to say, who the hell thought this was a good idea at Sega? And after 20 minutes of gambling, we finally complete the stage. But now we can grab the ice stone, which I am not going to count as touching ice. But now we can go over here, place the ice stone key, and finally touch ice. Up next is Sonic Advance. Now in Sonic Advance, we start out at the beach, which obviously we know we already know the beach doesn't have ice unless, well, you like we said it before, okay? But after Neo Green Hill, we go to Secret Bay Zone, and after that we go to Casino Plaza, which... Why is there so many casinos and just gamb... A am I missing something? I swear in every Sonic game, there's like some sort of casino or gambling. And after gambling our way out of Casino Paradise, we finally get to some ice. Next is Sonic Advance 2. Now this one for us is going to be a lot similar to the first Sonic Advance. The only difference is that this is going to take me longer because I, I suck at this boss battle. And finally, we touch ice. Next is Sonic Advance 3. Now, Sonic Advance 3 is nothing like the first two games. And that's because touching ice or snow in this game takes forever. And by forever, I mean 55 whole minutes. Isn't that amazing? Next is my beautiful baby, Sonic 06. I love playing Sonic 06 so much, there's literally not a single flaw in this game, in my opinion. Besides, perhaps, the occasional glitch or two that occur in this game, and eh, besides that, it's okay, but anyway, we get to White Acro- God damn- <clears throat> We get to White Acropolis and touch some snow. Moving on to Sonic Rivals. So if you did watch my last video, which was how fast can you touch fire in every Sonic game, you know that there's fire and ice power-ups in Sonic Rivals, which reminds me of Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice, which we, we can't play. Next is Sonic Rivals 2, and thankfully for us, this is another easy one. This one did end up taking a little bit longer, but we end up with the same result of touching ice. Next is Sonic and the Secret Rings. And you're probably wondering, ¿Qué? Hay hielo en Sonic y el secreto de anillo. <laughs> that, that's probably not even how you say it, it's bad. But yes, there is indeed snow in this game, which is probably going to take me another hour to get to, and... <sighs> Please leave a like on this video. This is take this video is these videos take me so long to make. Please help me out. And finally, after an hour and forty minutes, we get to Skeleton Dome, which snow it's something else. I don't care. Is this is snow? Leave me alone. Next is by far what I believe the best Sonic game of all time. You guys already know this Sonic Unleashed. And as you guys know, Sonic Unleashed's second name or Japanese name is Sonic World Adventure, which means we will get to touch ice eventually. But thankfully for what it seems to be like the 8th time in the past like month and a half, I get to play Sonic and Leash from the beginning. Woohoo! Now after what was the best hour of my day, we finally have to go to Alaska and call it a day after touching 
Ice. Next is Sonic and the Black Knight. Now the problem with Sonic and the Black Knight is that this one's going to take forever, maybe about it, approximately an hour, and that's due to the fact that I have to beat the game in order to touch snow, so <laughs> I'm gonna have lots of fun doing that. And here's a little update, we're at 43 minutes and we're in the quote-unquote final boss fight, which is King Arthur. And finally, after nearly an hour of gameplay, we finally reached Promised Land. Next is Sonic 4 Episode 2. So obviously in the first zone we have no ice or snow. But after beating the first Eggman boss battle we actually get to unlock White Park Zone. Which takes us to some snow. Next is Sonic Generations which is going to be another long one. Now you might be asking why it's going to take a while for me to do Sonic Generations. Well, actually for Sonic Generations I have to complete the entire- basically the entire game except the time meter boss because the only way to touch ice in Sonic Generations is by getting hit by Eggman. And which boss battle is that? Oh, the last one basically, Egg Dragoon. And you guys might be wondering why I have Super Sonic activated at zero rings, but don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> I didn't use it, I promise. Next is Sonic Lost World, a game that I am accepting, honestly, like the times that I've played it over the past couple weeks, I've noticed, oh, this, doesn't, this doesn't count by the way, um, <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, it's it's true, um, I'm growing quite fond to this game, honestly, like, I know a lot of people don't like this game, but I don't know, after playing it for approximately like 2-3 hours, this game is not that bad? Like here, take this stage for example, this stage is actually really good, when I played this stage for the first time, I was like, okay, I died right there, but it, that doesn't matter, but as I was saying before I, I got splattered on the wall like I'm a bug, but this stage is actually one of my favorite stages in this game, honestly. But anyway, moving on to Frozen Factor, we have finally touched some snow. Next is Sonic Forces. Now the good thing about Sonic Forces is that this is an easy game to actually touch some ice. And that's because Chemical Plant is frozen and it is also snowing. And last but not least, Sonic Frontiers. And this is gonna be a good one because I actually know how to speedrun the first two worlds. Now in Sonic Frontiers, there's a speedrun strat called the Slingshot, which allows us to do precisely this. Skip essentially the whole map. That was a bad one, but that's essentially what it is. And which takes us to these platform thingies, which you can basically fly on if you stomp on them and then jump. It takes you very, and I mean very high, as you guys can see. <laughs> then we go over here to activate Giganto, Giganto, whatever you guys want to call him, and then we start the boss fight. Oh, and also I forgot to mention this, but you actually have to get the stomp ability in order to, you know, stomp and also do the slingshot ability. Or not ability, but glitch. And over in Ares Island, there's not much you could do to actually skip until you get the first Chaos Emerald. Now, for whatever reason, once I actually did the skip to actually get to the final boss fight of Ares Island, I got sent to a different file that I have. Luckily for us, all I had to do was the slingshot, so I didn't, like, miss out on much besides maybe a couple minutes of time, but it's okay regardless. I mean, we were pretty much in the same spot where I have, would have been. But once I miss every parry in existence and actually beat the Wyvern, Wy Wyvern, that's the, that's the name, right? Wy Wyvern, that's how you pronounce it? But once we actually reach Chaos Island, we can slingshot all the way to the mountain, which has some ice. And with Sonic Frontiers being complete, we have finally touched ice in every single Sonic game. And that means Sonic and the Secret Rings is our loser with a time of 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 11 seconds. But anyway, let me know what I should touch next in the comments down below. But for now, thank you guys all for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And see you guys next time.